Hey everybody, it's Mark from 45 Drives R&D here. I'm looking to showcase a little something that I've been working on. I'm going to go through the whole project from the initial pitch to the final product, which means that there's going to be a lot to cover in this one. So, Chris, would you uh, roll that intro for me so I can tell everybody about uh, our newest generation of hybrid servers, the F8X series. So uh, I guess I'll start this one off with a little background on storage media. In the year of our Lord 2023, your most economical way to maximize storage capacity is to exclusively store your data on these guys, spinners. If we're talking dollars per terabyte, this is going to be your best value for storing data. However, when it comes to read-write speeds, latency, and IOPS, you're going to be better off with some sort of flash storage, whether that be SATA, SAS, or NVMe. The trade-off with this performance boost turns out to be the price, so you're looking about five times the price per terabyte, and that's just for SATA. But it doesn't have to be all or nothing, because we can leverage the storage capacity of hard drives and access times of solid-state drives to improve the performance of storage technologies like ZFS and Ceph by using a combination of both types of storage. We've covered this in some other tech tip videos in the past if you're interested in seeing how it's done. The advantages of combining different storage media was the reason why we released our hybrid servers in the first place. And we currently offer two styles of hybrid servers. We have the Hybrid 16 and the Hybrid 32. With these servers, we have slots that are specifically reserved to accommodate 2.5 inch SSDs. And depending on the model, you'll trade in the physical space of 8 hard drives to fit in 16 SSDs with the Hybrid 16, or 15 hard drives to fit in 32 SSDs in the Hybrid 32. Depending on the size of the chassis that you go with, this can skew the ratio of hard drives to solid state drives, which is where the F8X servers come in. So this all started when Mitch came over to me one day and he's like, man, is there a way that we can fit SSDs in a row without taking up so many hard drive slots? Like if I'm trying to come up with a cluster solution, either I have more SSD slots than I need or I'm wasting hard drive slots by putting SSDs into caddies. So I, a couple of mock-ups later, I arrived at something like this. So what we did is we used our regular 15 hard drive backplane and then came up with an adapter bracket that we could then use to mount our 8 SSD backplane sideways. This way we only sacrifice 3 hard drive slots and then in their place we can put 8 SSDs. And this all goes into a single row. So this makes way more sense now, especially with our smaller chassis sizes. And specifically with Ceph, we use SSDs in a couple of ways. First, we'll use either two or four SSDs to store the metadata for a given Ceph node. Uh, metadata is essentially information about a file, not the actual file content. Serving this data using faster storage media like SSDs will improve performance, so no matter what size of server you end up going with, you'll have four of your SSD slots reserved for this. And then we also use SSDs to store object maps, and these are accessed repeatedly when reading, and in our experience, we want to have a one SSD to every three hard drive ratio. So we're gonna offer three versions of this server. We've got the F8X1 with one row, an F8X2 with two rows, and an F8X3 with three rows. And we don't have enough connectors or capacity available on our current power supplies to do a fourth row. I know, I know, boo, hiss but we can still build you an XL60 or S45 hybrid the old way if you want us to. But there is a silver lining here. The longest chassis that we've made is the XL60 and it's just shy of 37 inches, 94 centimeters long to fit the average server rack. So that guy has four rows of drives and boy, she cramped. So let's say you want to put in an EATX motherboard. Well, we can make you a custom chassis, but now she won't fit in your average rack. So now we know we're not doing four rows in these new servers and each row of hard drives is about six inches or so. So let's see what we managed to accomplish with that extra space. First off, each one of these has room for an EATX board now out of the gate. And we've got a standard ATX board in here currently, but it's nice to have that option by default. The gap between the power supply and the rearmost drive cages was also put to good use. First off, the backplane power connectors now have a home. On the old models, especially the ones with redundant power supplies, like I have here, it can get pretty cramped. Now, whether you have a redundant or non-redundant power supply, you can just snap them into this little tower, 
and they stay into position. And we still have the room to put a third fan on that rear fan bracket. So now that's back in. Something that's always bugged me about how we cable managed the fans was that the fan power leads were bundled underneath the fan bracket. But if you ever needed to move the fan bracket either to get at something or do a fan swap, you had to unplug them underneath the fan bracket. So we came up with this little housing that keeps the fan connectors all in the same place. And you can unscrew it from the bracket and then each cable's held in there by a tie wrap. Speaking of tie wraps, we've got these simple little cable management anchors that are firmly held to the bottom of the chassis. And we used to use a lot of these little adhesive backed guys to do the same thing, but I found that they would lift off the bottom of the chassis if you reefed on them. So go ahead and have one of these little guys come off the server that's been running for some time. And now you got to try to get it to stick down on some dusty powder coat. No thanks. All these new cable management features are 3D printed, as well as the plastic parts used in the drive cages. I wanted to give a shout out to a customer of ours, Kyle, if you're watching, thank you. So he came up with this cool 3D printed fan shroud to help keep his HBAs cool. He was kind enough to send me the 3D model, so I printed my own and performed some thermal benchmarks with it. With the right combination of fans, we were able to see like an eight degree Celsius difference in the average HBA temperature. So I was able to make a sheet metal version of this that offers the same performance, and you'll see these guys in either the F8X2 or the F8X3. And continuing with fans, we opted to put all the fans in the front of the unit on a fan bracket. And this has the same cable management features as the rear bracket, so it's easy to remove all in one go. But this bracket also performs double duty by ensuring that the top cover is fully supported, especially in the middle. My old demo server has been manhandled and you can see it's starting to sag in the middle. And lastly, we opted to add the boot drive backplane to these servers. This was first seen on the 2U Stornado, but we've adapted it to work here. Now swapping boot drives is as simple as undoing a thumb screw. Uh, prior to this, if you wanted to change the boot drives out, you'd have to do six screws for the top cover, four screws on the back, and then eight more screws to free both of the drives. So a lot of these features aren't going to be exclusive to the F8X series of servers and we'll be adding what we can to our other 4U servers in the future. So maybe you want to get subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And hey, if you want to see more of me in the future, why don't you give me a like while you're at it. We'll be ready to sell these new servers soon, so check out 45drives.com for more info. Thanks for watching and stay classy.